the Internet of Things changing architectural design? Um, it's it's a little bit of a tricky one because I think the uh, the very latest sort of in, let's say technologies or the very latest sort of developers in the Internet of Things have in a way belong to the sort of haute couture high end uh, sort of part of the let's say the architectural design and mostly it pertains with like luxury it pertains to luxury interiors. Um, I've sat through a couple of lectures by these really good sort of high end German architects who are also doing quite a bit of engineering and they showed us projects where in a way the house is completely regulated sort of you know let's say online and that's where you see the sort of most sort of sci-fi like visions of the future of what you know house would sort of um, set itself ablaze or something just by itself taking this or that particular data on a kind of an everyday design basis sort of thing I think it's probably not there yet um, and obviously those technologies are affecting us as consumers and residents but the house itself is actually still I think lagging a little bit behind and it's just sort of catching up and do you, do you see that becoming a bigger and bigger part of architectural design as we move forward? I think so, although my feeling is that it's most likely uh, going to be handled by specialized consultants. Um, you know, the building kind of brings together anyway a lot of separate industries, and I don't think that the cutting edge side of that particular development will ever really rest with the architect. It will be something that we will be collaborating with high-end experts in the same way that you know, we work with engineers to resolve I don't know, just structural issues, sustainable issues, new materials. Uh, but our jobs will be more and more intertwined. Right. And so what are some of the most innovative developments that you're seeing in the architectural design space? Is there anything happening that's indicating a fundamental shift in the way we approach architectural design? Not quite. Um, I think there's obviously uh, dramatic changes, but they don't really affect let's say, the use of technology. They have to do with new materials, ways of building faster, cheaper. Um, they also have to do, again, with the way of saying, you know, these, the, there's a long word for that. They call it domotics, which is a sort of, the sort of inform, information technology of the house. And over there, it's almost like part of this really high-end consumer uh, industry where, you know, you actually find amazing gizmos and things for the house. But I wouldn't say that they are really um, driving, let's say, architectural innovation. Architectural innovation is really driven mostly at the moment, I think, by obviously the um, democratization of like the computer as a design tool, which allows you to make fancier looking things, makes them cheaper, therefore making them affordable possible. But these aren't things that are necessarily tied to, let's say, technological developments of the last five years. Changing directions just a bit, you give a talk based on your book, Pasta by Design that shows how the mathematical equations of pasta define the taxonomy of the genre, is the description. So how did that project come about? It was a bet. It was a late <laughs> night conversation that sort of went sideways. I actually <laughs> described some of this in the preface of the book. Um, I mean, I wouldn't get into detail, but I was sharing the office with an Italian guy for seven years, and you know, he would be cooking pasta every night, and then... He had all sorts of ideas. I mean, I obviously use mathematics to design, which is by itself already fairly rare. But of course, most of these innovations are lost on most people because, you know, architecture isn't that big of a cultural phenomenon, not as big as food. So therefore, he kept saying, oh, you should do something that's really more mainstream. How about this? How about that? He had a lot of bad ideas, but that one stuck. He was like, why don't we just work on pasta? After that, it took a couple of years, obviously, to, to happen. But that was, in a way, the beginning of this project. Right. And so what lessons can designers and architects take away from the pasta project? Um, well, for one thing, it's culturally it's such an important part of our lives that even dabbling a little bit into this field from the point of view of the designer enriches you immensely just by seeing what actually something that matters to people can do to you know, the way you work, the type of project that we're doing. I've had the most amazing reception. In fact, most of my work my serious work, never got any, in a way, of the attention that this particular project has. So I would say I learned a lot of things on that sort of, say, cultural, social, let's say, level. In terms of the architectural thing, I mean, obviously, you, I'm sure you've noticed that the design nowadays has become very biomorphic, it's become sort of very blob-like or cool. So in other words, we've learned from nature increasingly. There's a high-end high -end side to design, which looks at the way, say, nature behaves or how naturally things are produced. And pasta falls a little bit within that particular phenomenon. The only problem is that you can't get right angles, which, of course, is a problem if you try to design a bedroom. All right. 
And so in the process of doing the pasta project, you actually came up with a new pasta shape that you named Eoli. Is that correct? Eoli? Right. After your baby girl. That's right. So how would you describe the shape of the pasta? And have you succeeded in getting the pasta produced? Okay. Well, Eoli is no longer a baby, I'm afraid. She's grown <laughs> up to be six now. And originally the idea was to present her with that particular gift for her second and third and fourth birthday. <laughs> And I'm sad to say we are still running into a manufacturing problem because, you know, as I've sort of been saying in jest, the uh, world of pasta is a mirror universe. Everything that's around us, in a way, is flat, orthogonal, rectilinear. That's what you expect the walls and the ceilings of your house to be. In the world of pasta, it's exactly the other way around. In other words, um, everything is blobby, uh, sort of round-shaped, continuous. Therefore. Um, it's just a technical issue, it's that you just can't get something angular made simply by blowing a viscous mixture through a slit. So with the manufacturers, I was interested in doing something that would be original, i.e. slightly boring looking by the standard of pasta, but unique precisely because it would look so ordinary in that world where nothing really looks ordinary. So I tried to convince them. We had a bronze made sort of study to be made in Italy, somewhere near Piacenza. Everything was going fine, but then somehow the lines of communication with the manufacturers of the bronze dye sort of became longer and longer. I'm still hoping to have it ready for a seventh birthday. The design is finished. It's sort of corkscrew-like with a little bit of a <laughs> right angle thrown in and hopefully it will taste good as well. Is the right angle the, the hang-up on the That's a <laughs> hang-up on it. If you're trying to be banal in that particular trade, you're just going to do it. Right. So taking a look at your architectural firm, you guys have worked in some amazing projects. What kinds of things are you working on now and what's your favorite? At the moment, I'd say we're looking to do bigger projects because a lot of the, let's say, slightly original techniques or design approaches that I'm promoting at the office work best at the smaller scale. So you do a little bit of an installation for a museum, you make a big room. So these are things that we've done over and over and at the moment uh, we're interested in looking at bigger projects. So for instance, um, even though I may not say this on the record, we've just been part of that major international competition for the new Helsinki Museum, the Guggenheim in Helsinki, and we were very happy to actually use the same formulas to try to, for instance, plan a museum just like the New York Guggenheim, which is almost entirely designed around the idea of circulation. So we're doing circulation with mathematics. That's one thing that I'm actually quite keen on, and um, I really like this project. And we have, you know, more banal things, uh, House in Greece, which is very normal by that standard plus the dozens of little sort of research projects that I'm running left and right obviously at any given time. And so looking in general and aside from your own projects that you're working on, what people or projects are you following? What kinds of things are you finding fascinating these days? Well there's a, obviously a brand new generation of designers that in a way is a lot more material oriented than we ever were. So you know we kind of Innovated. Now I sound like I'm on a, an old guy, but I'm not. However, we sort of, let's say we put all the money on software, on kind of trying to absorb technology that was being developed now the last 10 years. The new generation is keener on looking at materials. You know, material science in a way now is the cool thing. And I've seen some really nice work done with not so much the software end of things, where you try to design something that might look good, but maybe looking at the uh, behavior of a particular material if you put it in the water and then somehow it reacts in a certain way and they're trying to make a wall out of it. And I think a lot of those things are probably right there out on the edge and are very, very interesting. Uh, you may not see them on a design magazine or a kind of interiors magazine just yet, but it's probably just a matter of four or five years. I'm thinking of someone like um, my colleague, the well-named Skylar Tibbetts at the MIT Media Lab. Skylar's work on, let's say, material structures is actually quite amazing. Now, whether this will make it to say proper architectural design within two, three years is, still remains to be seen. Right, it's probably just maybe one of the first iterations yes. to what will eventually come I out. I would think so, yeah. Thank you very much for talking with me today. Thank you.